doing today? Well, I plan on using my Argo, which means I've got to do maintenance on it before I can take it anywhere. Um, namely because it's at about 50 hours, which means it's due for another oil filter. So that'll take a few minutes. I'm going to get my suction pump, suck all the oil out of this thing and put a new filter on before I disappear. Hopefully I can find an air filter today. We'll see what happens. But yeah. Anyway, I'm going to do that and we'll be right back. I'd be this thing, so naturally I'm covered in grease and oil. Um, I've got in under here and I took my filter tongs and I've managed to loosen the filter, which is way in there. While I'm in here, I noticed that this idler chain's really loose and the other one's really tight. So idler chains might get an adjust if I can be bothered doing it. Probably really needs to be done. So anyway, first thing I've got to do is take my suction pump here shove it down a dipstick hole and suck all the oil out because getting to the drain plug is also a prick in this thing so let's move on so as is usual for this time of year it's decided to start raining while i'm doing stuff not ideal but you know i really want to get this done so i'm going to do it rain or not it's right into the bottom there i think see how much oil we can get out of this thing does look kind of dark for a little petrol. Alright, we'll give it a few minutes and get all the oil out. Now this is a slightly slower method than pulling a drain plug, but I'll tell you now it's a lot easier. The only problem is this little suction fitting doesn't quite fit the way it should, so I've got to sit here and hold it on, but now that's just a patience thing so yeah and I realize now I didn't put my air filter cover back on um, I was kicking around the um, Argo Owners International Facebook page the other day and um, yeah somebody wanted to know where the air filter was that's where it should be on the Briggs engines underneath this cap on the top here so I'm going to cover that up before we get um, water into it in the rain it's a little hard to position this one-handed that's the only thing because these little spring clips get stuck under the side oh. Oh, what is going on over here that side's not positioned properly now all right i'll do that in a minute i'm going to get some suction up on the pump here stop dragging oil out all right we'll be back in a minute I think we're nearly out of oil. Should be good. Very nearly at the bottom. It's cold too, I could have probably warmed the engine up, but doing this cold so the oil's a bit more viscous than it could be. There we go, that's right on the bottom. So I think we're done. All right, let's do some more stuff. Now there's no real way to do this that's camera friendly. But I'm going to get my filter tongs in here. And I pre-loosened this filter before. So it shouldn't be too hard to get off. Yes, it's nice and loose. It's been off our old filter, which is full of oil, of course. Okay, here we go. I forgot to bring my drain pan. Let's go get that. Yeah, gripping anything is going to be real difficult. Well, I've got oil all over my hands, so bit of degrees up, gives me some grip back for a few minutes while I put the new filter in. Now I'm going to prime it with a little bit of oil, it just helps present, uh, prevent the engine from running uh, starved of oil for a few seconds when you first start it up. Um, and I'll put that on, but I need to rinse all this off, two seconds. Alright, de-virginize the new oil filter. Taking the seal off it. Now yeah, this one, I need to just put a little bit of oil in it and let it soak in. Notice I haven't taken the foil seal fully off this. Just gives me a bit of control over how much oil I put in. Now what looks like a little bit of a spill on the top is actually by design. It gives me something to dip into my finger to put on the outer seal. 
and that does a couple of things it makes it easy to put on there without chafing the rubber seal and it also means when it comes time to take the filter off it's far less likely to uh, actually stick to the filter housing or rather the the engine side of things so I'm just doing that a help a bit now let's get inside and stick this thing on we'll step up and we'll position our filter upside down in here hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing it's hard to pick a camera angle in these positions all right one trick is not to over tighten these things and not to squeeze too hard with the filter tongs because you bugger the filter up it's okay if you're getting it off getting it back on is when you don't want to do that I'm going to try and grab to the top where there's facets and my filter tongs were snagged on something you don't want it too loose either because you don't want an oil leak in here but there are so many things to collide in here you only get a tiny little bit of a turn for each grip it would be nice for once actually it is nice I bought Land Rovers they're fairly easy to service but it's strange how no manufacturer seems to put oil filters in easy to access places with the exception of my little T30X trail that I used to have um, it was good yeah, but that's on certainly tight enough all right I'm noticing the shaft has moved a little bit there but I don't know if it's just because it's got oil residue on it the the outer bearings I grease all the time the inner bearings still got a bit of grease I've only recently oiled the chains which is good um, but I do need to sort this out all right let's put some fresh oil in it first Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, wipe the dipstick off with a rag. It'll tell me when I'm starting to come up to the sump and I want to check how much oil I still have in there. Nothing, not even on the bottom of the dipstick, which is what we want. Alright, now we've got a funnel. Now the oil I'm using is a Briggs & Stratton 10W30. I know it's a fancy oil and it doesn't need to be, but... Um, it's uh, what the lawnmower guys recommended and uh, before some of you guys get on my case about support your local Argo dealer well last I checked there's like only two of them in Australia I'm gonna leave the filter in here as well just because there's a lot of junk hanging around it does slow down the rate of filling but it'll be all right now I need to open up the foil seal on this a bit more Tow truck pulled up across the road. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, let's add some oil in. I'm gonna fill this funnel right up because that's at least as much that's gonna be in there. So I'll fill this funnel right up and we'll let it drain in. And then we'll be back once we've got it full. All right, we've got one funnel full. Where are we at? We're at the low mark. So we're already mostly there. So that means probably about another half a funnel full. Oh. And I'm never getting that oil cap back again. Maybe I am if I'm really super lucky. And that no, fell right to the floor. Lucky I have long arms. All right, so about another half a funnel full which would be about to the top of the label. We'll see where we're at with that. And we'll check again. I might just uh, leave this bit of video uncut while we go through all this. And I'll remember not to leave my letterman on the top here. All right. Morning. All right, so we're recording, we are. Where are we at here? Let's. Check our dipstick level here in case we've got to drag a bit back out. We are pretty well on the high mark, so we might suck a little bit out, but I think that will come down a bit once we start it too, uh, because it'll fill up the filter and it'll get amongst all the galleries and stuff. So we'll run it in a minute 
and uh, see what the oil level's like after we run it. It could end up asking for a bit more, but we're on the, the high mark at the moment. So we'll go from there. Um, certainly not going to put any too much oil in there. I don't want it getting up too high and causing problems. I'll stop at the lawnmower shop on the way out of town and uh, see if I can get an air filter. Because um, these are used in ride on lawnmowers a lot. Uh, and there's a Brickton Stratton dealer in town. There is my local Argo dealer, but they're about 15 minutes away, which is crazy because I think there's only like two of them in Australia. I, I need to really actually do some homework on that, but there's not many of them. They're not common. So um, I think I'm going to find my sockets and see what I can do about those idler chains. In order to do the idler chains, I've got to do one bolt up the front here that's really hard to get to. Um, I think I can feel it. But I've got to do it almost entirely by feel. I've got to loosen up both engine mounts and then jack the thing up a bit. So I'll have a crack at that and uh, see how we go. We've got all sorts of things, including a set of long sockets here. We're going to need them. Now, the way to do your idler chains, I'm going to have to pull a floor pan out, actually. So you've got to loosen off both the engine mounts. So there's one there, there's one up the front. you got to loosen those guys. And then there's a couple of adjustment screws underneath that basically change the skew of the engine so I need to get to that front one which you can never quite see uh, see but I'm going to try and find the right size for that one first and then we'll go from there now I've got a 24 mil socket but I'm pretty sure these are imperial like a 15 16s but I don't actually happen to have uh, an imperial long socket on hand so that will probably do they're just a nylock um, what I do need to do is find a breaker bar that fits that. So let me go find an adapter. Actually, I did one better. I found a half inch ratchet in my kit. Now, that is doing up. That is lefty loosey. See if we can loosen this guy. I think we can. It's worth noting I took the floor pan out too. Right, that is certainly loose enough. That captive nut is turning. It's loose enough for what we need. Now, the front one. Let's see if we can get it from here. Although I can't really see it, and it's just a pain. I'm gonna see if I can find it somewhere. All right, so it is down here where we need to get to it. Um, and this heat shield's in the way. And one thing I didn't do last time I tried this was actually removing the heat shield, which is a big flat blade screw um, or a socket but I've got a Leatherman so that's what we'll try now I'm gonna have to get a real screwdriver we'll be back all right so I feared my set of three Barco ratchet spanners and well these are clearly imperial there's one in there that's just good enough to fit it that's probably finger tight now yep Take these out. And that heat shield out of the way will probably mean I won't slash my wrists up trying to get this thing in here as well. I bet you there's more than these two screws by the feel of this. We'll see. Okay, that was unexpected. Comes off at the top, not the bottom. On that heat shield as a whole piece well it does give me the ability to see a little better down there so um i will have to put that heat shield back on in a minute but i might not just yet and see if i can feel that engine mount that i need with my left hand which i can right there but crap that's going to be fun to get to it's really wet and humid yeah it's making my nose run i don't have covid guys but I'm going to turn this camera off because you can't see much. Alright, so I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing, but I've got the socket on there. Let's see if I can loosen it now. I'm going to get about an eighth of a turn each time, but... I'm moving it. Oh, I'm going to be here all day. Nice little machines, but they didn't really think about service in this department. 
after I almost paid somebody else to do this. It's so frustrating. But we're getting looser. We're getting there. We're only going to get it loose. We have to get it off. You know, that might be loose enough to do what we need to do. So let's give it a crack. Okay, so going with the UNC theory, um, I've got a, uh, what's this, 9 sixteenths. So this guy's got to come up. So we wind in that direction, I believe, to increase the tension on this side, which feels okay now. Let's check the back. Uh, I might need to roll this forwards and backwards a bit. Take the handbrake off. Which I've got to go around the other side to do. Right, let's take our handbrake off. Give ourselves a bit of a rock on the trailer. Have we changed our chain tension a bit? That feels good on that side almost. Let's keep going. Alright. Crawl around the other side. That one feels good. There's a little bit of slack and not too bad. It certainly feels less. There's less disparity than there was when we started. It feels about right. That one feels about right there, so they're good. I guess we can tighten that up. It's the other side like. Now this one's still kind of loose, so I'm gonna jack this one up a little bit. Yep. Doing this entirely by feel. That one's a bit too tight now. Wind it down a touch. Yep. Need a little bit of slack in them, but not so much that they rattle. That's about good. Yep. All right. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to tighten this up. Turn it to righty tighty mode. Hopefully we don't strip the nut, because that would be bad. And these need to be firm, they're engine mounts. Especially given the way my wife and child drive this thing. All right, now I'm gonna do the front one. That's gonna take a month of Sunday, so I'm just gonna cut till I've done that bit. All right, so that's our idler chains done. Um, I think there's plenty of grease in these bearings up the front. They're difficult to get to, but I can see the grease. It's all in there just fine. These chains are a little, a little slack. I'm tempted to pull the tensioner up, but I might do that in the field. Um, we'll see if it's still rattling. One of the things you do get, you get chain rattle under the front here, is where this chain slaps across the, the member here. That's why they've put this guard over it. Um, I think there probably could have been a slightly better way of doing that, but. You know, it keeps the design simple, I guess, which means it's cheap. So I might need to pull this chain tensioner up a little bit at some point. It's probably not quite there yet. But, uh, yeah, I'll see what it's like when we're in the field and when it moves. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, time to get everything put back together. So all of you with OCD, you can be happy. I put it back together and I showed it on camera. Right. Now spanner's back. Now we need to put all our tools away, which is boring to watch. So I'm going to do that off camera. And we might uh, we might head off to the lawnmower shop and see if they've got an air filter for me. All right. Catch us in a few. All right. So one thing we do need to do is start everything up and um, see what the oil level is doing. By the way, I've got spare keys. These keys are a BDJ, or oh, sorry, BDJD1 key. They're a generic key. They're not like keyed in any special way. So, let's 
um, what I'm going to do is check my oil level first before I fire it up and then again afterwards. There's no doubt been a bit of oil trickle through and yeah it's come right up. So there will be a bit to fill up the oil filter. So it will come down a little bit. Yeah we're just above the high mark. So uh, let's whack our dipstick back in. Let's give our choke out for the moment. Need a little bit of throttle. Let it run for a couple of minutes and then we'll check the oil level. And this engine is not too hard to check the oil level while it's running. Um, let's do that. Pumped a bit through, and it's dropped just below the high mark. So, and it's not puffing smoke everywhere, and it's not running rough. So, I don't think the oil's too high. It's not getting into the crankcase or something stupid. Um, so, I think we're pretty right to put the cover back on for this one. So now, it means it's time to hitch the thing up and uh, go and find myself an air filter. Then we might bugger off out of town. All right, we have a new filter. And these drop-off hinges in the wind are a nightmare. So, already taken the old one out. Time to put the new one in and find a good spot for the camera. So, we have the seal on the top. Here's our old filter. Here's our brand new filter, which is from Milwaukee. I don't know what the part number is on this, it doesn't say, but it's a genuine Briggs and Stratton filter. I don't know which way up it's going to go, but that seal looks pretty good. Ah, alright. That goes over there, sits into a slot. And we pop this piece out. And it goes on there. Should sit nice and concentric, it's as easy as that to do an oil, uh, to do a air filter change maybe I might not have to drive around with a choke half on all the time all right I'm gonna do that up nice and firm because I don't want sand sucking in underneath this one's got sand in these two ridges there so definitely want that on firm but not over tight all right Let's see how we go from here Alright, this can be a spare in case that one gets clogged or wet. Cool. Now we're cooking with gas, let's put the bonnet back on and we'll take off. Alright, so I've done a bit of mucking around in town, I've picked up some supplies, it's time to head out. Now, I had plans to go to some private property, um, I still do, and uh, do a bit of a, a assist the landowner there. Um, but the landowner, when I've mentioned putting video on YouTube, is a little funny about it, so I don't know if I'll be able to film it. Um, might be able to just film some little bits and pieces of actually accessing the property. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. We, sh we should have something interesting to add to the end of this video. Anyway, we'll see you when we get there. Well, there's a little change I've got to make. Um, my GoPro mount busted off this a little while ago. So uh, I've got a new one that's a bit more robust. Um, I'm not sure if this is a genuine GoPro brand, but it's certainly a lot more robust than the old one. Let's see if we can fit this in here. There's a very, very fine thread and a long screw. It comes off when you least expect it. I'm thinking that should probably fit that handlebar about right. Let's see what happens. Now I'm going to need the rubber packer under there as well. Alright, that looks a little better. I'm going to keep, yeah, I'll keep it facing that way I think, just so I keep more hang-ups out of the way of my hands. This is for my GPS mount, which uh, neither my GPS or my spot tracker I have with me, so I'm going to have to rely on the spot trace in the bonnet in case I get stuck. And I just realised my bilge pump's been on like forever. I'd better check that that still runs. 
all right I think we're about right and we can stick the GoPro mount on here the other thing I'm gonna do I've got a bag of um, a bag of zip ties and I'm gonna stick my GoPro mount on somewhere for my three-way I've got two of these I'm using one at the moment this one's got the buggered tripod so that's on pretty well cool I've got a, another GoPro mount there Let's see if we can get the three-way on somehow all right, so I'm going to zip tie my three-way on somewhere. I'm not sure where. Probably along the back of the seat rail, so I can hang it out over the side. I wanted to get a bonnet-facing one facing back the driver. So I've got a couple of stick-on mounts that I've got. Um, the curved one is just a little bit too curved. The flat one I think is about right, but this stuff's notoriously difficult to get stuff sticking to. And I think I've got it mostly clean up the front here. But uh, we'll see how this goes. These are the proper 3M sticky pads. So, let's try here. Well, actually, that's stuck on really well. Alright, it's going to go on well. I guess we'll put a couple other mounts somewhere and uh, hopefully it'll be useful. Alright, so I decided I'm going to stick one up the back here as well. And uh, after playing with some camera angles, this one looks good. Uh, nice and strong. Oh, that's sticking well. Right, now for the three-way. Well, I've decided that I want to get some action shots watching the wheels go in the water and turn. And right here it'd be good. I can swing it out the side and I can get all the different angles. Um, but there's, without drilling holes in the body, there's not much way to mount it. I think I'm going to pull the reflector off and put some zip ties under it. Put the reflector back on. I can find a screwdriver. See if we can remove this. We'll see if I bust off a GoPro mount on my three-way and lose my GoPro and everything as well. Okay, so that's pretty well just straight onto the body reasonably thick. I can probably hide a zip tie or two under there. If I rest it on the body, I hope it will hang on. I don't know if this is a wise idea or not, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to guess three is going to be enough to do the job. <coughs> so let's take these and put it on loosely for the moment. These are just self-tappers into the body. Wow, that's a very magnetic screwdriver. There's the other screw here. Alright, I'll space these guys out. And put them in about the same spot. Alright. I wonder if this will work. Or if it'll end up costing me money. And go gross. Because I'll probably be on the water when it comes off, so we'll see what happens. Alright, let's whack this guy here and uh, see if we can zip tie these on. It's an idea, I might be chopping these off in a few minutes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is probably not going to work the way I'd hoped, but we'll see. I guess it's probably about as sturdy as some of the brackets that I've got. I feel probably more secure than just gluing that on. But that might hold on. Where can we see on the viewfinder? Can we see what I've done? Sort of. Let's uh, go for a bit of a wander. Alright, so we've got our GoPro hanging out the side here. We can wrap right around the side or I can come out to get a good look. Or different combinations therein. And I've got a 90 degree adapter I can use as well. So that might work. I'm going to chop these zip ties a bit short. Um, I do have some flush cutters still. Oh, we've got a small, a light aircraft pattern in there. That's interesting. Trim these guys off. Now I've decided I might want to get an underwater shot, so I'm going to stick another one of these mounts underneath here and see if we can get some underwater shots going in the water. Hopefully I won't wipe my camera out coming out of the water as well. All right, let's do that. All right, so I'm pretty sure there's no junk underneath there. 
try and stick this one on and this one might get a zip tie to ret help retain it if I can figure out how to fit this on and get this bit off oh, I trimmed my fingernails didn't I all right let's uh, use these guys to try and grab the end of that there we go all right let's go down here stick that on nice and firm although that is on quite firm I just have to be careful when I'm coming out that I'm not going over rocks or something. I just have to drive out of the water and do it. And it's a little bit cockeyed. Oh, but I'm not moving that now. It's stuck. I don't think that's going to matter a whole lot. Better do my bung plugs up before I forget. All right, we're looking good. Now I'm going to prep some other camera bits. All right, I've got my GoPro kit here and I'm going to salvage some of the bits off my broken uh, handlebar mount. In fact, I'm gonna, I might keep that. Oh, that one's rusted in. No, that one can stay there. I've got lots of these bits anyway. That screw can go in. This is the right angle mount. I'm gonna put that on the three way. And then I've got um, one of these guys that's gonna go on there as well. All right, and that will give me 90 degrees on the three way. Um, this guy, we're gonna reattach here. Um, I'm gonna need another screw. That should fit into all the brackets I've just uh, just put around the vehicle, including right underneath there. So it's going to be a fun day of getting different camera angles. And so 90 degree. Oh, that. Okay, that one's a bit shagged. All right, let's see what else we've got in here. We've got a better looking one here. Let's use that. That one's wrong thread. Just sort of accumulate bits. So here's another one. That's a better looking one. I might use that. Um, there's a magnet now. Magnet onto the trailer. Let's try this. That feels much better. All right. So uh, angle our camera up. We've got this one here. Okay. This side's a little windy, as you can probably tell. Oh. There we go. Right, 90 degree mounts on. I might try out a couple of these angles. Oh, there's my the battery door I took off my helmet cam. Huh. All right. Actually, it will be nice to not use the helmet cam doing a water crossing for a change because um, I've got the different options now. The helmet cam is good for the, the audio. I hope this is interesting because you know I'd hate to be making a boring video. Alright, let's swap this camera into this holder and see what our angle looks like. Alright, so we're on the back of the Argo here, but if I can swing around, I can angle up like this. And I think that's going to look just nice, actually. And if we want to stop the vibrations a bit, we can do that. Or we can bring it out. I think this will be best in, in the water, because there'll be less vibrations in the water. Um, but that's exactly the angle I'm looking for, is parallel to the tyres there. And we can probably angle up a bit like that. That's going to look alright. I need to clean this logo up too. All right, that actually won't be such a bad angle. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see what it looks like under the outboard mount. So what do you reckon, guys? How does this, this angle look? The water out there is pretty clear, so I'm hoping we'll be able to um, get a bit of a look actually under the water at what's happening underneath this thing. Um, I probably don't want to do this when I'm on the sand. I'll sandblast the hell out of the... Uh, the camera or on sort of rough terrain and rocks and stuff but it could be interesting um hopefully i won't lose the gopro and give the glue some time to set overnight well let's try the front mount okay so we're up in the front it's pretty good you gotta see me move around it's not bad and i'm hoping you can see the top of my head here that looks pretty good hopefully this will be a bit more creative b-roll stuff um, I was hoping to get a video out tonight, but uh, 
I don't know, we'll see what happens. We'll probably get this video out probably tomorrow uh, after I've done a bit of driving. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. But um, it's all good stuff all the same. Let's try this mount here. All right, so that's not too bad. We can see when I'm moving, and the stabilization in this position works pretty well. I can shake this and it won't vibrate too much. So active stable, sorry, software stabilization on these GoPros, it's actually really good. So yeah, all right, I think we're good. So we might, uh, yeah, we might move off. Now, if you notice, I'm jumping around locations in this video. Um, that's because this is a bit of a, a hodgepodge. Some things didn't go to plan, but I'll explain that in a minute. So uh, let's jump over to director's view and have a look at that. All right, so I'm gonna give you a bit of a recap about what happened. So went to site and I explained the owner, showed him some of my videos and what we're doing and stuff like that. He really needed the help accessing his flood affected land. Um, but uh, really wasn't keen. He's had a lot of problems with theft and break-ins and stuff like that. Oh, got to check the gate there. He really didn't want a uh, video going up online, so um, I'll probably see if I've got a bit of B-roll footage I can throw on the end of this, just to give you some um, some Argo porn, I guess. Um, yeah, what are we looking for? We're looking for side 40. Anyway, I've booked into a caravan park. This is after we're returning. I'm going to be staying in an area for a couple of days. We'll see if we get some interesting footage. So. Um, See what we can do. I'm running on director's view at the moment. You guys will uh, have to let me know what you reckon of that. Now, what site am I on? I'm on 31 apparently, and I can access that from the rear via 40. There's 32 and 33, there's 31 over there, so let's do that. I'm in the 6x6 by the way, the ambulance, towing the Argo behind. And I've improvised a bit of a, um, a windscreen mount, so that's how I can sort of keep my hands free and still talk. Where are we? We are... The site's a bit wet and mushy, so they've kept me off some of the worst of the sites. Where are we? That is our site there. So that is the beginning of 40, which is adjacent to 31, and they said drive right through. So, oh, there's a nice little step for drainage. That'll be good. Up the step we go. Oh, this is nice. Nice and close to the amenities too. All right, so I'm gonna let the turbo cool off um, and spin down. So yeah, so there's no footage of actually where I was planning on taking the Argo, which is a little disappointing, but when you're filming, you've got to stick to what the landowner says. You can't kind of do that stuff. Um, I've got my editing laptop with me, so uh, I might be able to do this one in the field if I've got some B-roll from one of the last trips I did. I think I've got a bit of B-roll from when I took my old man for a trip in the Argo, so we might do a bit of tour with that. Uh, we'll see what happens. Just can shut the diesel down now. That's not bad, a quarter tank for about 100 k's. Uh, yeah, about 30 litres to the 100 k of diesel, this six wheel. Um, asks for when we're towing the Argo and trailer and everything on the back. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. And I think I've got a roll of cam net I forgot to take out of the back of the Argo too. So um, I've got to return that to its rightful owner fairly soon as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you found it as an interesting video. Um, I'm not going to do any more commentary after this. If I get B-roll, you get B-roll. If I don't have anything on me, you won't see anything after this. We'll cut to the outro. I'm in the field. Uh, my editing capacity is a little limited. It's better than it used to be though after that recent purchase of that mil-spec laptop which you'll probably see in this month's donations and deliveries so uh, anyway i'll see you in the next one hope you had fun um i'm gonna see what i can do i'm gonna set up have a shower and cool off for the night see you later all right so i didn't get to do any b-roll and i didn't have any saved on my laptop so it's all gonna have to wait till tomorrow but I want to get this video out because I'm bored and I'm looking for something to do. Who would think trying to get some stress relief would be so boring? But anyway, um, to mix it up a bit, I might be in one of these Hunger Buster Rat Packs. 
This one I think is a chicken and veg. So we're going to throw that in the boiling vessel in a moment and uh, make ourselves a hot meal. I might even do myself some mashed spuds with it as well. Here's our main meal. Chunky chicken and vegetable. Sounds good. Alright, so we might hop on over to the boiling vessel. You know what, camera, you can come with me. Yes, this ambulance always looks like a bomb's hit it, but um, you know, it's lived in. Usually by my six year old apprentice. Alright, this should be nice and hot in here. We'll drop our rat pack in, and what we'll do is we will reset that so it'll bring it to the boil. So, because otherwise it'll maintain it at 86 degrees. So, in about five minutes or so, we'll have a hot meal. Got some two minute noodles for later. I have some tools and other stuff to finish. Mill spec laptop for doing some editing while I wait. And um, this little remote while I learn about the GPS epoch problems. So, um, yeah, we're pretty good. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Um, sorry, this has not got as much exciting stuff, but you've seen from the camera mounts, the next video you see about the Argo is going to have some interesting camera angles. And our sunset is going down in the side there quite nicely. Might grab a few photos real quick. But uh, yeah, we're pretty well done for the night. See you later. Hope it was interesting.